Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to show you um, probably the easiest junk journal to put together. If you have a 12 by 12 cardstock, you could just take it and fold it vertically like this. This is, um, I think, Alice in Wonderland by, who is it? Um, I forgot the name of the company. You can find this on Amazon, but I have it kind of laying down so it doesn't have an alligator mouth. But all I did is staple this. Really, really easy. You don't even have to stitch it together. But just to show you, let me pull you up a little bit so you could see. Because it's a big, it's a tall one, if you will. All right, maybe that's helpful. quite long just take a 12 by 12 and, and like I said fold it vertically and I'll we'll do one together here in this video I just wanted to show you what it looks like so there's no anything you don't have to do anything to the card stuff unless you want to there it is right there and I took magazine papers that I cut out this happens to be Daphne's diary magazine once you're done reading it or looking at it, then you can reuse the beautiful pages as part of your journal. And these are avocado dyed papers. This happens to be a Tomorrow River paper. And when I glued it, because the size, the width of this journal, I didn't have a paper that once you fold, if you fold this in half, it's not wide enough or tall enough for this journal size. So what I did is I took the Daphne's Diary pages, which happened to be just the perfect height, folded them just a, a little bit in, like so, and then glued in a piece of paper without folding it. Well, except this way. And that's what I did to every single piece of paper. And you can actually take avocado dyed paper and just glue it on here for uh, writing spaces. Or you can use it as a tip-in to add different things to this. Here's another one. Where there's a pocket there. Avocado dyed paper. Journaling spots. Isn't it beautiful? And it feels great. Here's um, coffee dye paper. And you can use this as a tuck spot. Tuck spot. Very, very simple to do. And I haven't even embellished it or added any tip-ins or any surprises in here or fold-outs yet. This is, I just did it. It doesn't take that long to do. We'll do it together. And there it is. It's done. I mean, you can round the corners. You can do whatever you'd like. You can distress it. Like I said, you can add uh, a button closure, some ribbons. I haven't done any of that. We'll do that maybe in uh, future videos. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is to do. And then once you kind of flatten it out, it stays perfect. Oh, another thing I think I mentioned earlier, all I did was staple this. And it's very, very easy to do. You want to staple in the middle. You can see it there. Right there. And I'll show you how to do that. So... With that said, let's grab some, let's get, grab our supplies. Okay guys, I'm back. So just to share with you what kind of supplies you need, you want to pick out 
your um, scrapbook 12 by 12 papers of your choice. These are absolute. Oh, by the way, these are from Stampria. Stampria is where you can find uh, is the name of the company that makes this. This is Alice in Wonderland 12 by 12 sheets. Absolutely beautiful quality. This is all from the same. I think this is yeah, the same. Uh, cardstock. This may be the Imagine one. So check out the Imagine Tempria cardstock or the Alice in Wonderland. One of those two. But absolutely beautiful pages. I've already folded them. You can tell I have not used anything to straighten out. But look how beautiful these are. You don't really have to do anything with them. This is a Daphne's Diary cutout. And again, I folded it as an insert, just as an example. You could see it fits perfectly inside a 12 by 12 fold. And once we add the paper, it would be perfect. You could see, just tucked in there. So you'll need your 12 by 12 pages. You will need a uh, bone folder I guess it's called bone something <laughs> you'll need your magazine cutouts this is one magazine that I've actually just separated you can take it from anywhere and you need some avocado dyed papers or onion dyed papers this is onion dyed papers Love the sound. And you'll need a stapler for us to staple it. And at the end, you may need some paper clips to kind of hold it down and so it keeps its shape. That's it. That's all you need. Oh, wait a minute. You also need a glue stick. A simple glue stick. That's all you need. So, let's get started. So, which one are we going to do? I, I like this, this one, and gosh, I love them all. Oh, we'll just pick one. And you could probably mass make these if you wanted to. So we'll put this one aside. And we'll just use this to measure our sizes. This one is perfect. So you want to every one of them to match this particular width. It does not have to be perfect. You can see in the one that I previously made, some are kind of sticking out and I like it. Remember once I embellish this, there may be some lace here or some other uh, tabs or whatever whatever you want to add to it so it doesn't have to be perfect that's the whole beauty of junk journaling which I've really come to love okay so then you'll take a piece of dye paper of your choosing and you'll simply line it up like so like this and then you'll glue it down. But before I do that, I want to use this as a template for the rest of my pages. So let's pick them out. Let's pick them out. Let's see what works. This one may be pretty. I'll take this one. And you can make it as thick as you'd like. This one's pretty. You can make it as thick as you'd like or as um, thin as you'd like. It's up to you. There are no rules really here. This is beautiful. Because you could see this, my goal is to take scraps of the avocado dyed paper and I'll show you in future videos of how we can cover this as a journaling part with avocado dyed paper 
and then the rest of the border will appear which I think will be really pretty some of these harder pages are probably not a good idea to use just because they're not pliable okay so I think we have enough let's put this aside and let's these up a little bit. It has the glue when you pull out the pages. All I do is line this up and I totally guesstimate like so. Let's try these guys out. It's perfect. I wanted to see how many I have in this one. Just curious. So we have one, two, Three, four, five, six, six pages. Not very much. Has plenty of room to grow. So we have. a few more. Oh, that's great. I had seven. Perfect. One more time. And perfect. Now we'll add our pages to it. And one thing to keep in mind is you'll notice that the folding. You don't want to do it this way. I mean, you could. But the way I have them done now is you want the writing to be right side up and you want to 
if you notice here I have some that have the fold on the inner part and some that have the fold on the back part and the reason for that is you want to make sure that whatever you see when you first open it just like you would line up signatures you want the pretty part to show first like in this case I wouldn't want it this way I mean you could depending on what's on this side but in this case I'll have it done this way so that would be the first one that may be the second one here's one where I think it will be beautiful to see this so you'll notice that the fold is appearing first whereas here you'll have the full magazine page and then the folds in the back so I hope I hope that uh, makes sense so when you line it up think of that so for this one we're going to do it however you'd like if you turn it over just to glue you'll notice you'll have a little bit of space here and a little bit of space here Now you can glue the whole thing down, but I prefer to just glue it this way to make it kind of like a tuck-in spot for ephemera and such. Or maybe a little journaling secrets. You really cannot mess this up. It is so easy. Even if you go over a little bit like I did here, just wipe it down. And then turn it over and it's done. Only other thing we have to do here is fold it in just a bit. I wait for when I tuck it in here so I know exactly how much to fold in. So I'll wait on that. But for right now, you could just put it in in the order that you like. So next, let's grab maybe a yellow color to match that beautiful picture. This is a Tomo River legal size paper. You buy in uh, bundles on its own. So you can tell that the size of it, the, the height of it is perfect. It's actually much better than a copy paper. On the back I'm gonna do the same thing. You can actually do it this way. this way if you wanted to. I think this one's prettier. So we'll do it this way. Hmm? Yes. And then This one, you see, you see this one has the text upside down, the words upside down. So I'll probably flip this one around like this. And it's okay, you could just change it however you like to. Even if you were to put it in upside down, you could just use paper to cover it up. This one, let's go ahead and it 
doesn't even need that much glue. This would be a great project with children, maybe. This one. That's a very uneven fold. by you, but for some reason, cutting or scoring or folding in a straight line seems to be really hard to do. I don't know why. Okay. I love these avocado dyed papers. They feel amazing if you're a textile person. And I think if you're into junk journaling or paper in general, you probably are. Especially if you're a Tomo River paper connoisseur or anything like that. Okay. And I got three more to do. Let's get a really wrinkly coffee dyed paper. very quick and now we have all of our papers don't worry about the arrangement of them yet because we're not doing that yet right now we're just going to fold enough to hide
again, it doesn't have to be perfect or exact. Now we have to actually stack them into each other or nestle them into each other. So when we um, staple them, we staple them all with uh, one, one shot. So let's see, this is going to be our first page. Let's do this as our second page. third page fourth one fifth one and our final page so now you have them all nestled within each other one signature as they say. Now if this bothers you that it sticks out a little bit, you're more than welcome to come in here and just fold it a little bit more into itself here. But I'm going to leave it the way it is because I actually like that. And you can use your bone tool Open. Okay, you want to make sure you have them all. Okay, here we go. In one line because we're going to staple it right on that on that edge. Make sure I have them the right side up. Yes. Way because we want the meat side of the stapler to be on the outside. We don't want the two prongs to be on the outside because it can grab things and poke you and you won't like it very much. Now here's a challenge. If you have one of those fancy staple, staple, staple guns that could just go in like this, you're fine. That would be much easier, but I don't. I have a regular office stapler. And so for me, I have to fold this in like so and then bring it under so I can reach that line. Now the problem is because if you fold it under, you want to make sure that I'm not going to end up stapling it. So it's a little bit of a finagling, I guess, to get it just right. but not that hard just get it on the line okay and give it everything you got move it over I like to do three just because it's so long don't worry if it's a little bit off I've done that before and that's absolutely fine it would be nice if it's all perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. 
And the final one, I'm just going to move this over. If you look on the inside, you can see it there. That's not very straight, is it? You see? No need to worry. And this fold it. If it bothers you, you can always go back, remove that staple, and do it again. That's it. And you can use your bone folder one more time. Because all that bending and Let's see. There you go. There's our little junk journal. Ready to fill to be filled in with all kinds of goodness. We have our top pockets here. Easy peasy. Okay, because this is a little bit off, you could tell that it it's not even here. Again, if that bothers you, you can go back and remove that staple and then do it again, which I'm probably going to do offline because I don't like how it's taken away from this page. Now, if you want to just leave it alone and let it stay flat, you can do that by using your paper clips like I've done. And just leave it for an hour or two and it'll be perfectly flat when you're ready to use it. And there you go. So hopefully you found that helpful. I hope you go make your creative junk journal yourself and have a bunch of fun. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.